recently divorced and was getting a lot of pressure from my friends and family to get back out there. They even convinced me to sign up for dating apps. My marriage had been over for a while, but it had just recently became official after my 30th birthday. Even though I went on a couple of dates, I put most of my energy into my business, just trying to keep myself occupied. But I was happy to have the distraction from the holiday parties and the, where's Nick? questions paired with, time heals all wounds, comments. One night, while working on a property list for one of my buyers, I received an email with the subject line, your sister recommended you. I opened it. Hi, Carly. Your sister suggested that I reach out to you. My company is opening a location in Utah, and I have to relocate there ASAP. Your sister said you're the best. When can you stop by to view the property and get it ready to list? He put his information at the bottom of the email, his name, phone number, and address to the property. I immediately put the address into MLS to see if there were any previous listings and photos. There were. It was a beautiful two-story house on the water. The previous listing showed floor-to-ceiling windows that provided a priceless view of the water from almost every room in the house. The property was just built four years prior and had every upgrade you could imagine. I wanted this listing. I checked the time. Almost 10 p.m. Too late to call now, I thought to myself. I responded to the email. Hi, Jim. Thank you for reaching out. I'd be happy to discuss the sale of your property at 123 Main Street. When would be a good time for me to stop by? I hit send and scrolled through the photos again, just in awe of the property. After a few moments, my computer chimed, letting me know that I had a new email. It was from Jim. Can you stop by tomorrow at 10 a.m.? I replied confirming the time and shut my laptop for the night. The next day, I showed up to the house as scheduled. As I was getting out of the car, I realized that I forgot to thank my sister for the referral. I sent her a text. Thanks for the referral. I'm meeting Jim now. I'll let you know how it goes. Jim must have seen me pull up because he opened the door to greet me as I was still climbing the massive front steps. Hi, you must be Carly. He waited for me to reach the top of the stairs with a smile on his face. Yes, and you must be Jim. I held my hand out to shake his, but he went in for a hug instead. I was completely caught off guard and didn't know what to do. I awkwardly laughed it off and hugged him back. I just feel like I know you already. Amanda's told me so much about you. The whole time still hugging me. I finally pulled away and said, all good things I hope. I was so uncomfortable, but he wasn't a complete stranger. I mean, my sister recommended him. He stared at me for a few seconds with a smile on his face before leading me inside. The house was amazing. I've had plenty of luxury listings before, but this house was different. Not your typical new construction. It was definitely a custom-built home made specially for Jim. The meeting went well. We talked about price, timing, marketing, all the things a listing appointment entails. The only weird part about the interaction was the hug. As we discussed the potential listing date, I pulled out my phone to look at the calendar. I noticed a message from my sister. It said, Who's Jim? Her text confused me, but no red flags were going up yet. I replied, Jim. He lives at 123 Main Street, beautiful house on the water. He said you recommended me. She sent a confused emoji face. I don't know anyone named Jim. So you didn't send me a referral? She insisted that she didn't. My fingers couldn't move fast enough when I replied, Amanda, he mentioned you by name. As I waited for her response, I looked up at Jim with a forced smile. I watched as the reply bubbles tortured my anxiety. Jim asked if everything was okay. My voice caught as I said, Yeah, I just need to make a real quick call. Will you excuse me? I made my way to the front door, trying not to let my fear show. I felt Jim slowly following behind me. Time stood still as I opened the front door and saw Amanda's next text. Carly, I didn't send you a referral. If you're still there, you need to leave. Now. My heart dropped. I was done worrying about him knowing if I was scared or not. Without looking behind me, I bolted out the door, down the steps, and into my car. As I was closing my car door, I saw Jim coming down the steps with an evil grin on his face. I hit the lock button with one hand as I started the car with the other. He was walking slow, 
like a serial killer that knew that he would catch up to you no matter how fast you were running. I threw the car in reverse and sped out of the driveway, almost hitting his mailbox. As I sped away, my sister called. I answered and frantically let her know that I was okay physically, but mentally, I was completely fucked. Once I was far enough away, I pulled into a gas station and just cried in my car. I decided not to call the cops. I mean, I didn't have anything to go on. He didn't assault me, never even touched me except for the hug. So what, I'd make a police report that says, he lied about knowing my sister. This happened years ago, and as I'm writing this, I'm actually upset that I didn't report it just in case he does it to somebody else. I did tell my broker, though. Thank God I texted my sister to say thank you. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known to get out of that house. A couple of days later, we realized how he knew my sister. I opened one of the dating apps that she made me sign up for. One of the photos I uploaded is of me and my sister with the caption, Me and my big sis Amanda. I was dumb and put my first and last name on my profile. Not my best moment. My inbox had 18 messages from the same profile. It was Jim. The messages were sent three days before he reached out about wanting to sell his house. All but one anyway. The last one was sent the day that I met him at his house. This message still sends chills down my spine. We could have been something great with a photo that appeared to be a screenshot from a security camera. It was the photo of him hugging me on the porch. I canceled that dating app that day. 